Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the double AMC sample test cars passage number four. If you're not sure on where to start with the car section of the exam, make sure to check out our three part strategy videos showing you what's important in a car's passage and how to condense it in a timely fashion. Let's jump into this passage. Before we get started, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep cranking out more of these passage breakdowns and strategy videos for you all. Okay, passage number four. Let's go ahead and look at it. It's actually a fairly interesting one. I'm going to read this passage to you and highlight some of the things that I think are important, show you my main idea for the passage, and then walk you how to answer all these questions correctly. I always start with the passage title, and it's called Disturbing the Universe. It doesn't really tell me a whole lot there. Okay, this passage says, it stands to the everlasting credit. All right. Already, we can stop there. Everlasting credit. That means that the author is very pro whatever he's about to explain. Stands for the everlasting credit of the ins International Fraternity of Biologists that biologists, with rare exceptions, never push the development of biological weapons. Also, biologists persuaded the governments of those countries that had started serious biological weapons programs to abandon their programs and to destroy their stockpiles of weapons. So what I'm getting here is that biologists were very instrumental in helping get rid of these biological weapons, and because our author is giving them credit, that means that our author agrees with that. Dislikes bi biological weapons. The man who did more than any other single person to rid the world of these weapons is Matthew Messelson. Okay, so that's one of our awesome biologists. Messelson knew little about biological weapons when he came to the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency. He talked with Army officers who specialized in biological warfare and read their writings. He moved freely in the world of biological agents and distribution systems. What he saw there appalled him. So if our author dislikes biological weapons, and our author likes Messelson, and Messelson dislikes what he saw, I imagine that what he saw was pro-biological weapons. So it seems like the army was for biological weapons when Messelson got there. And that doesn't make our author very happy. The most frightening of all the things Messelson discovered was Army Field Manual 310. This was a booklet issued to combat units to instruct them in the details of biological warfare. Oh, our hunch was right. Um, we literally have a packet for how to drop atom bombs. <laughs> a series of graphs is presented that tell how many biological agent bomblets and aircraft should drop to cover a given area under given conditions, daytime or nighttime, for various types of terrain and various types of human target. Uh, you want to make sure that you're accurate when you're bombing civilians. It said that the United States was equipped and prepared for biological warfare and that this was the way a modern army should be trained, that every country that should that wanted to keep up with the Joneses must have its own biological agents and bomblets too. Um, and so it's pretty obvious to me that our author is showing just kind of the, the gross horrors that were highlighted in this field manual and that our author disagrees with it and that Messelson is about to fight it. And we're probably about to read in the rest of this passage the heroic acts that Messelson took to fight it. But I want to point out this language right here, keeping up with the Joneses. This is kind of colloquially, colloquially um, a phrase that describes feeling like you need to do a certain activity or in this case stockpile a certain amount of weapons um, in order to keep up with the neighbors. The fact that our author chose to use such kind of like playful um, language when describing something so serious tells me that the author is trying to show how ridiculous this idea is. So don't overlook small things like that. After he, being Messelson, read Field Manual 310, Messelson vowed that he would fight against this nonsense and not rest until he had got rid of it. He worked indefatigably to expose the idiocy of biological warfare. His arguments rested on three main points. This is exactly what we thought it was going to be. Messelson doesn't like them. Here's what Messelson did to stop them. And so what we're probably going to see is a list of things. And our author, I imagine, is going to expand on one or two of those. Um, that's usually what they do. And then they'll probably ask you questions about which one of these is the most important or something like that. And the most important would be the one that had been explained the most. So see if you can pick it out while we're going through here. First, biological weapons are uniquely dangerous in providing opportunities for a small and poor country or even a group of terrorists to do grave and widespread damage to a large country such as the United States, meaning they have large destructive power. 
Second, the chief factors increasing the risks that other countries might acquire and use biological weapons are our own development of agents and our own propaganda as typified by Field Manual 310. That's really wordy, and I want you to take I would want you to take the time and actually figure out what that's saying. What it's saying is we're forcing these small countries to get biological weapons so that they make sure that we don't run them over. So even the presence of them or us having them makes other countries stockpile them. Third, biological weapons are uniquely unreliable and therefore inappropriate to any rational military use for the United States, which um, for which the United States might intend to use them, even including the mission of retaliation in kind for a biological attack on our own people. Now, if this one hits you a little bit hard, it did me too. I was... I was like, okay, well, maybe that's an actual good reason. Maybe, maybe you would want them in case you had to use them, you know, fight fire with fire. Um, but let's keep reading. Just make sure that you've got those kind of summarizing your head. They have great destructive power, kind of forces um, other countries to build them, even having them or talking about them. <clears throat> and they're not, they're kind of irrational. We, we don't need them. Messelson found that it was not difficult to persuade the military and political leaders to agree with his first two points. The crucial question was the third one. Okay, so you know how I told you earlier that we're about to highlight one or two of them. It looks like we're going to highlight this third one, which makes sense because it was the hardest sell for us, right? So how did Messelson sell this? The crucial question was the third one. Did there ever exist any realistic military requirement for United States biological weapons. Here, there was a division of opinion between the biological warfare generals and the rest of the military establishment. Okay, so we've got a point of contention over this third question. What is it? The biological warfare generals sincerely believed that we needed biological weapons to deter, by threat of retaliation, the use of biological weapons by others. If you nuke me, I will nuke you. That's what that's saying. They thought that, that was necessary. Messelson had to show that their belief was based on an illusion. Okay, so whether or not you agree with this statement, you're going to answer questions like it's true. Okay, so Messelson disliked biological weapons, and this is how he's going to prove that they're irrational. He confronted them, them being the generals, when they came to argue for their programs before congressional committees. He said, General, we would like to know, supposing that the United States had been attacked with biological weapons and the President had given the order to retaliate, just what would you do? Where and how and against whom would you use our weapons? Saying, do you have a specific plan? Does this even make sense? The generals were never able to give him a clear answer. Okay, notice this is really strong language. Never able to give a clear answer. There was, in fact, no answer to these questions. So... No, this is kind of repetitive. Um, so the author is trying to drive a point home that there is no answer. After listening to Messelson's questions and to the general's answers, the congressman became convinced that his third point, the one about how the weapons were not rational even for retaliation, was valid. Even from the narrowest military point of view, our biological weapons policy made no sense. So our author is very passionate about this. Our author really dislikes biological weapons. The last paragraph says, In November 1969, President Nixon announced the unilateral abandonment of all development of biological weapons, the destruction of our weapon stockpiles, and the conversion of our biological warfare laboratories to open programs of medical research. So, Musselson pulled off what all the biologists were kind of rooting for. So I want to take all these things and condense them down into a main idea. And again, if you don't know how to do that, then make sure to check out our strategy videos condensed to main idea. Uh, but this is what I ended up coming up with. Biologists like Messelson were instrumental in heroic abolition of biological weapons by arguing their destructive power and their impractical usage. And I included this little arrow that this was a hard sell. I got that main, the main meat is that biologists like Messelson got rid of biologi biological weapons. And then I kind of answered the question, okay, why or how? They did this by arguing that they were destructive and that they were impractical. So let's see if we can take this main idea and answer all the questions with it. Question number one says that the author claims that on the question of developing biological weapons, biologists were A, generally supportive. Um, no, they did not like them, right? We, in our main idea, we say biologists like Messelson. 
Um, so probably not to A. B says generally opposed. I like that. It's soft. It doesn't say that every single one of them is opposed because inevitably there were going to be some that were for it. Um, but they were definitely against it. So I'll say maybe to answer choice B. C says split nearly evenly. No, we don't get any support that they were kind of um, up in the air about it. Maybe the military community was split. But the biologists were pretty on the side of getting rid of them. And then D says unanimously opposed. Um, and so now you're between B and D. And D is very strong language. It's saying that every single person was against them. Unanimously, you cannot take this lightly. Or if it said all, you, you cannot take that lightly. You have to be very literal with the MCAT when it comes to stuff like this. Um, and so where they're actually trying to pull this from, I believe, is the first paragraph. Yeah, biologists, with rare exception, never push the development of biological weapons. But there was rare exceptions. So that eliminates answer choice D. And now you're only left with answer choice B. They were generally opposed to it. For number two, it says, based on the passage, the attitude of the U.S. military, as reflected in Field Manual 310, was that the military... Remember, Field Manual 310 was like this bomber's guide for how to use uh, biological warfare. Going through, we're going to say, A, the military disapproved of the development and or the use of biological weapons by any nation. No, they obviously didn't care about using it for us, so maybe not A. B says they approved of the development of biological weapons but did not see the use of biological weapons as logical. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you, why would you think that it was irrational but you still approve it being made? Um, plus, they thought it was rational in the cases of retaliation. That's why they had a whole manual on how to retaliate with it. So maybe not B. C says they saw the development and the use of biological weapons as logical. Probably so. I mean, they did like it. So I'll say maybe to C. D, they thought biological warfare was ineffective. That doesn't make sense. If you thought something's ineffective or it was irrational or illogical, why would you continue to make it, manufacture it, and have like a step-by-step -step guide um, on WikiHow of how to use it? So maybe not D, and I'd stick with answer choice C as being correct here. Number three says, according to the passage, Messelson asked some generals about the details of the possible use of biological uh, weapons in order to show what. Okay, so this is saying, why did Messelson question the generals? What was he trying to get at? And remember, when Messelson was questioning the generals, that's whenever they were arguing over that third point, the one that was um, a hard sell, that they were impractical, that biological weapons were impractical. A says that they do little damage. Well, let's go up to our main idea. They have large destructive power. So, no, it's not that they do little damage. So maybe not A. B says that biological weapons serve no reasonable purpose. Okay, that was kind of the whole point of asking those questions, right? Is to poke holes in the general's arguments that we needed them by saying, you don't even have a game plan. You wouldn't even know how to use them if we had to use them. So they're not reasonable. So maybe to B. C says that biological weapons should only be used in retaliation. Now, that's what the generals were arguing for, but Messelson and the other biologists argued against and kind of got um, abolished. So maybe not C. And then D says the United States needed to, de to develop more effective biological weapons. No, it's not saying that we need to get better at using this. It's saying that the whole premise behind biological weapons is sloppy and ineffective, um, and it has no use even whenever something like military force is deemed useful. So maybe not D. The correct answer would be B. Um, number four says the passage suggests that biologists were influential in persuading the United States government to do what? So this is pretty much just asking what the main idea is. Uh, what did these move? What did these biologists pull off? Um, and so the way that you answer these Roman numeral questions, a lot of people will like look at answer choice one uh, Roman numeral one and be like, oh, that's true. I'm going to go down and eliminate all the ones that don't have one in it. I always say the best way to do it is go through each of these and figure out which one is a true statement. Just put a check mark beside it or a mental check mark beside it. And then once you figure out which of these statements answers the question, then you just look for the answer choice that contains those two. So what do these biologists pull off? We got the government to number one, destroy stockpiles of biological weapons. Yeah, that happened, right? Um, two, to abandon programs of biological weapons development. Absolutely. Like Nixon okayed that, right? 
And then three says better utilize existing biological weapons rather than rely on old ones. No, we threw the we threw them away. We got rid of them. Converted the facilities to medical research centers and stuff like that. So maybe not, or definitely not. This is a false statement. So now I'm looking for answer choice that says one and two. And that is answer choice B. Number five says the passage suggests that Messelson's opposition to the development of biological weapons was based in part on the claim that what? So what's Messelson's problem with biological weapons, a.k.a. what's the main idea? If you're noticing a trend, uh, yeah, like all these questions are essentially asking what the main idea is. So Messelson was opposed to them because A says biological weapons do not work. No, he thought that they were too strong. Uh, B says biological weapons research is very expensive. Um, this is what we call a cop-out answer choice. If you're curious on these traps, um, you should check out our video called Recognizing Traps. It's one of our strategy videos. But what they're trying to do here is say a statement that is probably true and seems like realistic, like, oh, we should stop because it's too expensive. Um, but this was not touched on in the passage. Um, so even though it's probably a true statement, it was not elaborated on in the passage. And so if it wasn't elaborated on in the passage, then it cannot answer a question that starts with the passage suggests, because the passage did not suggest it. So maybe not B. C says U.S. laboratories should be converted to medical research labs. Um, no, that was just kind of like an unintended consequence. Uh, that was not part of Messelson's argument. Remember, Messelson's argument had three tenets. Um, too dangerous, kind of spurs other people to use them, and it's ir illogical. And then D says biological weapons in the hands of small and poor countries constitutes a particular danger. Okay, so D is the correct answer here. It was, it was in one of those three tenets. Uh, ended up making it into our main idea, right? Because they have large destructive power. And even though our main idea does just says destructive power, that's a very loaded statement, right? Like we, when, whenever I wrote that down, I was thinking, and you should have been thinking yourself, that it creates destructive power in the hands of just a few or like a terrorist group um, and that this destructive power inspires other countries to, and terrorist groups and organizations to go get these biological weapons. And the last one says, according to the passage, the United States government eventually made the decision to abandon development of biological weapons. Why? How did Messelson pull off what he pulled off? A says they were too exp expensive to continue to develop, especially during a time of tightened defense budgets. This is another cop-out answer choice. A lot of times they'll stick with money because it's something that we're like, oh, well, yeah, sure, it's reasonable. But they didn't talk about money. B says other nations would suspend development or use if the United States would. The decision never relied on other states um, or other nations. Remember, the decision came down to Messelson proving in court that this doesn't make any sense what we're doing. It, it's not rational. It's not logical. Um, so maybe not B. C says they would never be used except in retaliation for another country's using them against the United States first. Um, I feel like C is a tempting answer choice for a lot of people because that's kind of how the military viewed it. But remember, Messelson proved that even this was a bad idea. So maybe not C. And D said they could not be shown to serve a logical military purpose. They're not logical. They are irrational. They are, the usage of them is impractical. So notice, if you had gotten this, you would have, like, if that's all you knew, is that these biological materials were impractical, you could have answered, like, four out of these six questions correct. So whenever they come out with a list of arguments and then they emphasize one of them, just note that that's going to be the big ticket argument that gets tested on a lot. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're studying for the MCAT yourself, then make sure to check out our channel where we've got tons of strategies and other passage breakdowns and even a full MCAT program coming soon and for free. I'll see you next time.